Hi everybody, welcome or welcome back to the Christmas Bible study. First of all, we're in a new location. Guys, this is my office at home, which I normally film from my office at my church that I work at, but this is my little cowgirl corner. I'm just obsessed with it. Um, if you guys follow me over on Instagram and TikTok, you know that I actually just moved into a new room, a new space and everything. So all of this is different and new and I've been kind of working on it, but quickly like over on this side, I don't know if you can tell, but this drawer right here, is filled with mild liners, which are my favorite highlighters. So this is also like my Bible corner. I'm obsessed with it. I love it. And this is actually one of my first, I think I filmed like two other videos over here, but I'm finally kind of like finishing up with this space, which is just so exciting to kind of finish up with over here. So anyways, I, um, it's a, once again, about four o'clock whenever I'm filming this, I already had my protein coffee this morning. So I have an ice water with me. I ended up funny story before we hop into the Bible study. So good. So my, my sister and I, for Christmas, we bought my mom a sonic ice maker for our house. And it accidentally delivered and it said on the outside box what it was. So we just throw, and she, my mom is the one that got the package that day because it was like, I was like, I left the house and then it, it, it immediately came. And I was like, so upset. But anyways, it's totally fine. Um, but we went ahead and gave her her gift early. And so now we have all have sonic eyes so wonderful early christmas gift but anyways today we're going to be celebrating christmas with going over luke chapter five which i'm so happy about um here we go i do just want to answer one quick question about bible studying that i've been getting kind of a lot is a lot of people ask um whenever i follow along on the bible app or like what do i use as like commentary so i did want to show y'all really quick i do use my ipad one second. I do use my iPad whenever I Bible study just because this is like my second phone and um, it has no social media on it. Literally, it's for editing. This is my Christmas background, but it's literally for editing and Bible study. So that's like why I bought it. And this is what it looks like. It is a different um, translation. So I read out of the NIV in my study Bible. And so I'll follow along in the, the passion trend, the passion translation TPT is what it's like labeled on here. And it gives you like a different variation of it. And I, I just love it. It has, it like the reason I love the passion translation is I feel like it, it like the way it's written relates to me. Like it like connects in my brain. It's a very, very beautiful text and script. And it is, it's honestly just a gorgeous thing to read and it's it's just beautiful. So anyway, that's why I follow along. It's literally on the Bible app. It's just called um, YouVersion, the Holy Bible. That's what it is. And that's what I use literally every single day. So, but with that being said, let's go ahead and hop into Luke chapter five. If you guys have been following along, I hope that you've watched Luke one through four. They've been so fun and so exciting, but I'm really, really pumped. I was actually reading over today I was going over Luke chapter five and Luke chapter six, and it was like, I've read it before, but it was like a whole new like appreciation for it. It was so beautiful. So at this point, we are to the point where Jesus is going to start calling his disciples. And so this kind of um, part that we're talking about is whenever he calls like the first couple of um, the stories of him calling his first like disciples. And so basically he's assembling his like 12 apostles his 12 disciples and so um in chapter six yes in chapter six we will get to the um official like 12 apostles 12 disciples but that'll be in the next video but for today we're gonna start off whenever jesus calls his first couple disciples so we're gonna read about that so if you guys have your bibles let's go ahead and flip open like i said this study bible also right here is available on amazon it's also available on target but they never have them in stores i've looked everywhere I've been to so many Targets looking. I've been to like some ones in Florida. I've been to ones in Texas and I literally can never find them, but they always do have them online. So what I do is on my LTK, which is linked in the description box down below and on my Amazon, I just have those linked there as well as a couple of other Bibles that are the exact same thing, but they have different covers. So whatever suits your personality the best, there's all different ones. So those are all linked in my Amazon and LTK. So you guys can go and then also on there, I have all my mild liners midliners, however you want to pronounce it. And that is my Bible highlighters. I have found that don't bleed through the pages for me personally, because I do highlight a whole lot. And so I wanted to have vibrant colors that weren't going to bleed through these pages because these pages are a little bit thin. So 
And that being said, all of that's down in the, in the description box down below so that you guys can get it. Um, truly, all the things that I have bought off there as well as my Bible tabs like this. I actually just got a new new Bible tabs. Let me just show y'all right here. They're pink. They're so beautiful. But anyways, all of these are linked in my down there. And the reason I'm even like talking about this is because that though all of those things is first of all, the study Bible. Whenever I found a Bible that truly helps me understand changed my life. Like it became my best friend because it was like, oh my gosh, like I understand this translation. You know what I mean? And then the highlighters, I even like whenever I was in school, whenever I, I'm, I, gra I graduated from college, but whenever I was in high school and in college, I had to do color on everything because that's how my brain understands. Like I have to memorize things through color. And so it's the same thing with my Bible reading. I found that I can memorize scripture so much better if I highlight it in color and it just brings it back to my memory and as well as just studying it. And then also my Bible tabs have truly helped me navigate like for example, whenever I'm preaching and things like that, if I have a verse that pops in my head from the Holy Spirit, I can quickly find the section because there's tabs. And also it helps me remember where everything is. So I've like been able to learn and navigate through my Bible way quicker. I'm already six minutes into this video. Let's hop into Luke. Okay, Luke chapter five, verses one. Here is where we're gonna be starting. One day Jesus was standing by the lake and the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats and then basically, I'm just going to paraphrase because this is kind of a longer chapter. And so basically he gets into this boat, which happens to be Simon Peter. His name is Peter. His name is Simon. So if you ever read Simon or Peter, it's the same person. But at one point, which we'll get to this later, that Jesus actually changes his name. So anyways, um, right now it's calling him Simon, but later he will be Peter. All right. So at this point he said he gets into Simon's boat and he like brings the boat out so that he can teach to all the people that are standing on the shore. After that, he tells Simon, um, like they go out a little bit further and he says, put on your nets this way. And Simon is like, um, we've been fishing all night. Like we have not caught anything, but because what it, he said something so beautiful is, but because you say so, I will let down my nets. So he ends up letting down his nets and Lo and behold, he catches the biggest catch ever so much that they had to call people to come out there and help them carry in the load. And I just think that that is so beautiful because right after this, obviously, if you um, have studied like all this and all different translations and stuff, you know that Simon at this point, he was struggling. He was being taxed a lot. And that's why he was fishing in the middle of the night all night looking for answers, looking to be able to make money, you know? And then literally, I think that this is so beautiful that Jesus showed up in the way that would touch his heart and show that he could provide in the best way possible. Because then right after that, whenever they get back onto the shore, Jesus says, um, he asked him to follow him, but he says it like this. It says, um, it says, don't be afraid from now on, you will fish for people. Another translation says, you'll be fishers of men. And so I think that's beautiful. And uh, kind of to translate that, one thing, one translation says, fish die when they are caught. But Simon is now called to catch people and teach them how to live. And so I thought that that was just so beautiful. I remember I read that translation and I was like, oh my gosh, like that's, it's so beautiful because just the, just the way it was so described. But also um, one thing that, came to mind whenever I read it this morning was Jesus was about to call Simon and whenever he whenever Jesus called them and asked him to follow him that did not mean like just follow him on social media I mean obviously that wasn't a thing then whenever you followed someone and you became their student or someone that was learning from them you literally dropped everything that you had you you dropped your you dropped your career you would have to leave your family and you would physically follow Jesus and so obviously that is a long treacherous road and so there was something inside of Simon that was like I can trust this man and I think that it was so beautiful because once I like I said earlier that Simon he was struggling and Jesus showed him that he could provide in that moment like his his boat was so full that they had to call in other people to come and help them. And like, isn't that so crazy? Like how the Lord showed that like, he would provide for him and then he asked him to follow him. And then of course, Simon. And then it also says that um, the sons of Zebedee, James and John, they also came with him. So anyways, um, the next two little sections I'll show y'all in my Bible. There's one section here, one section here. They are two stories about healing. I'm not going to go through and read the whole thing, but the first one is whenever Jesus heals a man with leprosy. And at this time, this was like a 
thing that if you had leprosy, you would be like an outcast. Like you couldn't be around people because it was highly, highly, highly contagious. And so the, the crazy thing about this is Jesus actually goes up to the man and says, um, I am willing, be clean. And he touches him. And so if you were even to touch a leper in these times, you would have to be like cast out of the city and like away from everyone else, basically quarantined. And if you had leprosy, there wasn't a cure. So you were basically left to die. And so the fact that Jesus even touched the man and he was completely healed was absolutely radical and insane. And unlike anything that anyone around here had ever seen before. Okay, the next section is whenever Jesus forgives and heals a paralyzed man. And then the next section down there is this is going back to whenever Jesus calls another one of his disciples. So in this translation, it calls him Levi, but really this is Matthew. And Levi is just another name for him. But if you read in the other translations, his name is Matthew. Matthew the tax collector is kind of what we remember him as. So I love this story. I, I honestly think that Matthew maybe my favorite disciple i just i love his character um in the, i love his character in the movie in the show the chosen and then also i love just reading about him in the bible and also i love his translation out of matthew mark luke and john out of the gospels matthew is definitely my favorite just my personal favorite but anyways let's keep on going okay so at this point matthew is a tax collector and so He's basically, to kind of set it up, he's seen as a traitor to his people because now he's to, he's collecting taxes for the Romans and the Romans are the bad guys in, in this time. And also tax collectors were known for taking more. So it would be like however much money you make, you have to give a percentage to Rome, just like paying taxes now. But they the Romans were known for taking more than you actually owed. So like if you had owed like $10, they would make you... $15, like, you know what I mean? So stuff like that. And so these people were, did not like Matthew because he, he, he was not, he's not a Roman. Like he now works for Rome. And so everyone sees him as a traitor. Anyways, that's kind of where this is now. And so the fact that Jesus is going up to him and asking him to follow him is like crazy because people don't see him as like People see him as a traitor. Anyways, so after this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector by the name of Levi also known as Matthew, sitting at his tax booth. Follow me, Jesus said to him. And Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. This is so beautiful because there wasn't much of a, like, conversation back and forth. It was like as soon as Jesus asked him, without hesitation, without questioning, Matthew left everything and followed Jesus. And I just think that Whenever I think about this story, I just think about that there is something about being in the presence of Jesus that, what's the word, like caused Matthew to literally give up everything. Because, I mean, that was his occupation. I mean, his reputation is long gone because now he's known as a traitor. And so the fact that he left his only thing, his occupation that was providing him with basically his whole life is, is absolutely insane. And so he was so interrupted by love from the father from Jesus in this moment that he was able to give up everything without questioning without hesitation to lead this beautiful life so anyways after this um Matthew aka Levi he hosts Jesus and the, the disciples all the disciples at this point and um the disciples that Jesus had already asked not all the disciples are assembled yet but at this time the disciples that were with him um, Matthew invites all of them into his home and they host a banquet. Now, because Matthew works for Rome, he is more wealthy. So he has all of his friends over who are all tax collectors and sinners because like I said, they're working for Rome and they were, like I said, known as the bad guys at this point. So Jesus um, is sitting and eating with all these tax collectors and sinners. And that's kind of where we're going to pick up. So this is going to, let's start reading in verse 30. And I'm just going to read it to you. It says, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law who belonged to the sect, sect, that belonged to their section, I'm so sorry, complain to his disciples and say, why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? I'm going to pause right there quickly. If you have never like read the Bible and you don't really know fully what's going on, you have the Romans, which are on the bad side. And then you have the side that Jesus is on and the Pharisees are technically Christians, but the Pharisees loved their traditions and their laws that were 
that were placed in the Old Testament, they were more in love with following a religious tradition that they actually missed Jesus. And so they, yeah, you, this this will all un unfold and play out in a minute, but just that's, that's what's happening. So these Pharisees come and they're asking Jesus' disciples, they're like, why is he eating with these tax collectors and sinners that are obviously like, in, in, they're in sin. Why is Jesus eating with them? And here's what Jesus answered them and says. He says, is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but I've come to call sinners to repentance. I think this is beautiful because Jesus is sitting with these sinners, but he's not sinning with them. He's actually transforming them by just loving on them. Like, 